Hello guys, welcome to Linux Ort. In this video, I want to show you how you can try Linux Mint on your Windows machine. It's completely irrelevant which Windows version. We are doing this by installing a virtual computer inside your computer. This is kind of a cool technology called virtualization. It's the perfect video for Linux beginners who just want to get in touch with Linux and want to try it, want to feel it in some way. This is a great start just to try out Linux Mint and I would say let's start right through. At first we need to download Linux Mint. All links can be found in the video description. I select download here, select download at the cinnamon edition. This is the edition I recommend to everyone and here I can uh, select my country where I'm living and um, select any server in there and then Linux Mint is downloading. You could choose any server you want, but it's of course very useful to choose a server near to you. The second thing we need to download is called VirtualBox and we select a download in here and then select Windows Hosts. Perfect. Now I can just open up VirtualBox when it is successfully downloaded and then I can select yes. We need some Visual Redistributable package being installed first. I put you the link to it in the video description. I need to download the x64 version. I select agree, select install. Yes, this is okay. And we are installing it. Perfect. So now let's have a look on VirtualBox again. I open up VirtualBox.exe again. I select install, select, I accept the license agreement, select next again, next again. Warning network interfaces. So our network interface is disabled for a very short time. This is completely okay. I select yes. And even some downloads continue after um, resetting this. And we see also some missing dependencies, Python core. I guess these are not so important. So I select yes, proceed with the installation now. And then I select next and I select install. After successful installation, we can just select start virtual box after installation, select finish and then VirtualBox is a starting. Perfect. Here we have it. I can minimize this thing here. Now we can go to the basic mode here. This is completely fine. And I'm selecting new here. And then we create our virtual computer. I call it Linux Mint. Um, then we can define our ISO image, but I will do that later because otherwise we have the option for unattended installation. We don't want to do this. So just keep the rest as it is and I select next. Then we can define how much RAM we should address to this virtual machine. I am recommending at least two gigabytes like this, but um, if you really want to use Linux Mint at some time, then I'm recommending you setting this at least up to 4,000 megabytes, but please be sure to always stay in the green area. And in terms of processors, I at least recommend you two processors and I'm going with four in here. This is completely okay. Just also make sure that you stay in the green area here. And then I select next. Then we can create a virtual hard disk now. 25 gigabytes are completely okay for just testing. If you want to work a bit with the machine, maybe give it about 100 gigabytes, but 25 is for me completely okay. I select next in here and select finish and then I can select a start. So let's go, I would say. And if you now got a message uh, that virtualization is not activated or the virtual machine uh, couldn't be started right through, then have a look to your laptop model, for example, HP ProBook, and then enable virtualization. Then you find some videos, for example, or some instructions how to do that. This is a thing about of five minutes and then this is activated. If this is activated and you have done everything correctly, then select our DVD here, select other, then in download, select your Linux Mint installation file, which we have downloaded some minutes ago. And then I select open 
and then I select mount and retry boot. This looks good. I select start Linux Mint and let's have a look. If we have done everything correctly, then we see now our Linux Mint, but this isn't installed yet. We have to install it on our virtual computer. For that, we double click on install Linux Mint. Then I'm selecting English. This is okay. I select continue, select my keyboard layout. I'm having the UK one and select continue. Then we hit install multimedia codex. I select continue. And then Linux Mint is looking at our disk, but only the virtual disk and is checking if there is anything yet, but there isn't. So it is only recommending us to erase disk and install Linux Mint. This is completely okay because this is a complete new virtual computer. So I select install now. Just a small reminder, if you want to enable encryption, you could do this via advanced features and select use LVM with new Linux Mint installation and then encrypt the new Linux Mint installation for security. But um, then you really have to decrypt your Linux Mint every boot. And if you lose the encryption password, then your data is gone. So only choose this if you really want. Normally for a virtual machine, just for testing, you won't need any encryption here. So I just select install now with erase disk and then I select continue and then I'm selecting my area where I live. This looks good. I select continue and then I'm choosing my name and then I can type in a password here. You have to set up a password but for a virtual machine this is quite okay if you only do a very simple password like here. This is completely okay and then I'm selecting log in automatically so we don't have to type it in if we start the virtual box. But also very important, I really don't recommend you to encrypt your home folder. This is a kind of old functionality on modern systems. This might offer more disadvantages than really improvements. So if you want to encrypt your Linux Mint installation, just head to the option I showed you some seconds before, but you can always also encrypt your system later. But um, yeah, we will discuss this in another video. So I'm selecting continue here. This looks now fine for me. And now we are getting our installation wait screen. This takes about 10 minutes, I would say. After some time, our installation is complete. I can select restart now. And with this, we are only restarting our virtual machine and not our whole Windows computer. So I'm selecting restart now here. This takes some time. Then we get the message, please remove the installation medium and then press enter. I type enter. This is completely okay for virtual box. And then this is starting again. So here we are. Welcome to Linux Mint and now we have installed Linux Mint. We see a welcome screen which is also quite nice. We will have a look to it not in this video but I also made some more videos how to use Linux Mint, what to do after installation of Linux Mint. Just have a look into the videos or just look around yourself. This is completely okay but in the end I definitely want to show you some things you should consider doing and um, this is at device here. Yeah, because we see we have a very small screen here. I can select devices here and select insert guest edition CD image. This is a driver package for installing the virtual box support that we can use some very handy functions. But for that we select run and then we have to type in our password we defined in our installation and then we see some text is running. This is completely automatic. We just wait for a very specific message and this specific message is press return to close this window. So I press the enter key again and yeah, we see it even got smaller. But for that, let's just uh, eject these disk here right click this disk and select eject for example um, and then we can restart our computer just by uh, going to the start menu and then we select restart here. Perfect. This is of course only restarting our Linux Mint 
and if we have done everything correctly yeah we still uh, don't get a higher resolution but this is now to VirtualBox just move VirtualBox a bit around uh, change the size of the window and then we see okay Linux Mint is adjusting itself sometimes it is falling back into a specific fallback mode you can hit yes here and then Linux Mint is just restarting its desktop and now this looks quite fine we have our welcome screen here you can discover this by yourself um, but i still want to show you some features this is under devices the shared folders function um, select shared folder settings here and then we can add a specific folder then we can choose a folder path here select other here and then i created a new folder in my windows machine here which i called just vm for example i'm selecting this one um, and then select open i just put a text file into it that we can test that this is okay i select open here and then I can just select auto mount and make permanent. Just leave the rest with the default. I select OK here and then I select OK again. Then we see a specific folder SFVM, but yeah, we can't display any folder contents yet. This is because of the user rights of uh, this Linux Mint uh, version here. We can very easily go to the menu search for users and groups we open this up type in our password um, just a small reminder for all new linux users if you have to type in your password then linux mint is asking for administrator rights um, for example managing users and also some user rights which are managed in so-called groups i open this one up and then i'm going all the way down here and then we select vbox sf this is very important for this sf feature here we select ok and then i can close everything and i would say let's restart this machine very quick so after a quick restart we see now yeah nothing really has changed but if we open up this vm folder here now we can see the test 123txt file I put from my Windows machine. And now you can very easily transfer some files between your real Windows computer and your virtual machine here. Um, also, I highly recommend you enabling the shared clipboard bi-directional. Now, if you copy something in Linux Mint, you also could paste it in Windows and vice versa. This is quite helpful and very handy. And uh, also we have something like drag and drop features, but I won't recommend them because they are not working in every situation. Also the enable clipboard for file transfers is quite experimental at the time. This is a very new function. So I would also not enable this one. Um, but now this looks quite good. Just let's head over to devices, network, network settings, which could be very helpful sometimes is choosing the bridged adapter here and hitting OK here. Then now your Linux Mint is a full participant in your local network, so-called in your local Wi-Fi. So you can also access all printers, for example, or other machines in your local network. This could be also helpful sometimes. So now we are almost finished. Just a small hint for you. If you press the right control key, not the left one, the right control key and F, just do it. Then you see VirtualBox is entering the full screen mode and then you have your Linux in full screen mode. And then, yeah, you have almost a complete uh, installed operating system on your computer, but it's only virtually. Um, so you didn't install anything on your real computer, only on your virtual computer. We just created some minutes before in our Windows machine. So now you could use Linux parallel to Windows and just get a feeding of it. And if you want to install Linux Mint at a later point of time on your real hardware, just have a look to our YouTube channel. We release new helpful stuff about Linux and open source every week. And we also created a crash course for beginners how to switch to Linux. And if you want to get more familiar with Linux Mint, then check out our playlist. For example, Linux tips and tricks. This is very recommended. And um, this is it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. 
If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are seeing us in the next one. Have a good day. Bye.